Good evening, good evening, good evening. I love you guys. Happy Sunday, August 20th, Sunday night. Amen. What an awesome service, amen, this morning. God is so good. He always knows how to love on us the best. He always knows how to spoil us, right? And amen. Um, so we had a ladies' banquet meeting tonight. There's another one on Tuesday night um, at, it says 4 p.m., but it may be different time on Tuesday. So we'll need to check with Miss Wendy Beatty about that one. Um, there was a Dave Ramsey class, the Financial Peace University. That started today. It was awesome, guys. It's not too late to get signed up for that, I believe. But that class was incredible. Um, next week, this week, this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Everybody say Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, who's coming to town? Bishop Scott Coon. Amen. I'm excited. But who knows what tomorrow is? Monday night prayer is at 7, 7 p.m. Wednesday night we have service. I don't know if there's anything going on Tuesday. I don't know if, um, is there women's ministry this Tuesday? Anybody know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Tuesday night is the women's ministry hostess meeting for the ladies' banquet, which is in October, so you need to save the date. Um, next Sunday night is the star crowning, so you want to make sure that you are here to support those girls who have worked so hard. But um, we just want to stand, and let's pray. Let's pray over the service, ma'am. Thursday night is prime timers. Okay, so Monday night's prayer night. Tuesday night's women's meeting in the gym, Wednesday night's church, Thursday night's prime timers, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Bishop Scott Coon's going to be here, Sunday night is the star crowning, so we're going to get to see each other every day of the week, <laughs> every day of the week, we may as well make it a revival, amen, come on. Come on, somebody. All right. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house tonight, God, and we can worship you, Lord. Thank you for that you, you have allowed Central to grow, Father God, from the inside out, Lord, that, that we have all these incredible things. There's something going on for your kingdom every single night of the week. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we pray that you prepare our hearts for this weekend, Father God, our minds, Lord, for the mighty word that you've given Bishop Scott Coon. Father God, prepare us for Wednesday night, refueling night. Lord, prepare us for, for Monday night prayer, Lord. Help us to get battle ready, Father God, to war and, and to pray over this community, over this state, over this nation, God. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing inside and outside of this house, Father God. Lord, we pray that you protect our pastors, our associate pastors, our youth pastors, Father God, Sunday school teachers and ministry workers, Father God, nursery workers, and, and even the janitorial staff, Father God. Lord, that when they walk to their position, Lord, that they know that you've called them and you've equipped them, Father. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing and who you are bringing to this house. Lord, we ask these things in your mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, why don't y'all turn to your neighbor and greet somebody? Y'all turn to your neighbor, greet somebody. It's going.
to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, oh, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, uh-huh. 
when they told me to come to the house of the Lord. Come on, church. That same river that flowed this morning is flowing tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. My God, come on, somebody. Let's worship God. Hallelujah to God. Come on, church. Let that river flow again tonight. My God, my God. Let the wind of that great power blow in this house this evening. Oh, shake us. Pump down to the very sinew tonight, Lord. Make us that house of prayer. <laughs> glory to God. Make me a log on that fire, God. That I might burn brightly for the glory of this bride. A house of prayer. A house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. That's your prayer tonight. Altar. Come on. Never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make, Make me a house of prayer. prayer. May that be our testament tonight, Lord. I might become that house of prayer, God. A choice being made on the verity of your truth and righteousness. I might become a lively stone in your spiritual building called the church, Lord. We might become the visible of this invisible God one more time. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Watch you lift those antennas up tonight. Come on. Glory to God. Let thy kingdom come tonight, God. Let thy will be done in every heart and every life in Central Assembly of God tonight, Lord. Oh, mighty God, I'm glad I, I'm glad I don't walk by feelings, but I'm glad I can feel the touch of God here tonight. Come on. We're not Dead Sea Scrolls. We're living letters. Hallelujah to God. Read of all men and approved of God. Thank you, Lord. We know they take notice that we've been with Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless y'all, Amy. Thank y'all so much. I might have you come and worship a little bit here after I get through talking to these folks. Aren't you proud of these folks? Amen. I had a group like that, I'd probably be in Washington, D.C. having a big tabernacle or something. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stay up here. Thank you. Uh, y'all are so sweet. Lee and 
Pastor uh, Emmanuel and uh, and my friend there. I done forgot his name, but you know, I I, I stay around Brother Dubos a lot, so I can fr forget your name, and I guess God can forgive me for it. Amen. Hey, thank you, buddy. Thank God for an opportunity to preach the gospel. I, I started when I was 34 years old. God called me to preach the gospel. I, I may not have lived the life before him that I should have lived, but I never failed to preach the gospel. But see, the key to this is I have to live the gospel also. He, he, she said, make me a house of prayer. Well, I've got something to say about that. Huh? You know, we're still in covenant with this God. It's a two-party system. I assure you he'll never fall back on his part, but I can stir stumble around and mess my part up. But he still loves us. He's still going to regrain, amen, that confidence back within our hearts and lives because he's not going to let one of us fail. Hallelujah to God. If we'll simply, in a childlike mentality, love him and do those things that he's called us to be. I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about receiving what you lost or gave away. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Oh, the devil done this and the devil done that. No, you let that devil do that. Or, or the weakness of your flesh or something messed up. Because I ain't let him take nothing from me. Boy, you ought to shout me down tonight, ain't you? I'm, I mean, that devil has come to do what? Come on, talk to me. What did Jesus come to do? And more abundantly. It's a sad day that that Pentecostal church has gone down to the remudiates, if I can say that word. I looked it up today, but I'm having trouble saying it. But, you know, never, no flesh ever, uh, amen, glories itself in my service. But if I'll, I'll stand erect and allow Christ to be the forefront of everything that I am, that devil has nothing in me. Come on, it, he came to Jesus after that fast and that trouble out there, and he found nothing in Christ. Well, he ought to found nothing in us but Jesus, amen? I love the Lord. I, he's been good to me, better than I deserve. Come on, can you shout amen with me? Amen, Where was I going to go tonight? Amy, bless your heart. She just, y'all help me. Got my Bible and my little notebook. This is when I got my mule. Y'all know what that is? It's a little RV. Not an RV, but a, a, a little thing that you can go in the woods with. Thank you, Lee. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. And I think I'll begin at verse 21. I know I love that old King James Bible, but I'm sure those other translations are okay. Didn't, didn't we hear two great messages Wednesday night and Sunday morning? Huh? I, I'm glad that my draw, dry bones can be revived. I'm glad that there's a vision tonight, my God, that he gave that man of God, old Ezekiel, to, to show that country how they, how they become, in, in essence, they went away from God. But if you keep reading that 37th chapter, it gets better and better and better. Come on. There's two sticks talked about. One of them's Judah. The other one is Ephraim. Come on. And two sticks become one. Aren't you glad that one day he knocked on your door and two became one in this great Christ? And he gave you the commandments of life and the abundance of that life evermore hallelujah to god let's look at verse 21 now i'm not going to read it down to the end of the chapter but i'm going to read just a few verses here verse 21 of joel chapter 2 says fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the lord will do great things we can stop right there huh that's shouting that'd make an episcopalian want to run wouldn't it be not afraid ye beasts of the field for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit and fruit and the fig tree the vine do yield their strength hallelujah be glad then you children of zion and we can typify that with the church also and rejoice in the lord your god for he have given you your, you he have given you amen the former rain and the moderately and he will cause to come down amen the, the, for the rain for you for the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And if I understand that, it's more of an earthly uh, application because there had to be rain to come to get that seed germinated. Then it has to be a former rain to bring it up and be fruitful. Well, God's done that by the Holy Ghost. 
You see, I couldn't be in Christ or not but for the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't believe that? He does. There's only way you can be in Christ is by the Holy Spirit. He shed that blood and allowed that Holy Ghost to come to mankind, come to a people that weren't even the people of God. Come on, you Gentiles. And brought us in under the same covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and gave us promises also of eternal life. Amen. Verse 4. And the floor shall be full of wheat. The vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Now, we can typify that spiritually. And I will restore to you, verse 25, the years that the cank locusts have eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent before you. I don't like that. Why did he do that? Huh? Maybe the same reason he went into there with that prayer meeting and they were selling all that mess in there. And Jesus made that little whip and started overturning tables and beat them up, amen, and run them out of there. There ain't nothing here for sale. I said, there's nothing here to buy. Uh, there's nothing that God has for you to buy or sell. He's a giver. He's always been a giver from the inception that the first time I ever met him, he gave me life, and he gave me that life abundantly. Come on, somebody. Called me even to preach, saw something in my goofy self that amen allowed me to come and preach this gospel. But he loves people, and he'll never forsake the word of God if somebody will speak it. Amen. Then Emmanuel just preached the house down. Yeah, I was going to walk over here and uh, pray for this lady. I like to fell down. You know me. I'm old ankles. <laughs> and, then, and then she fell down. And I said, my God, there's laying like cardboard out here. Hello? I didn't see nobody shove nobody down. Huh? But I'm, I told Brother Mills, I'm like them old preachers. And if you go down, you better get up more like Jesus. Don't you shout me down. I'm preaching good. Christ-likeness is synonymous, church. They ought to know Central Assembly is full of Christ-like individuals that have been birthed and born of God. Hallelujah. That we've been with Jesus. Let me see if I want to read some more. I've got just two more scriptures I think I want to read. Ye, and ye, 26, and ye shall eat in plenty. <laughs> you should have seen me at that Mexican place today eating. I was eating in plenty. We can do the same thing. Jesus said his body was food and his blood was drink. Huh? I don't think we ought to be camelistic, but I believe we can do that in a spiritual atmosphere or, or, or coherence, yes. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, let, let me digress. Some. I know people have left this church, and I don't know why they left. That's between them and God. But, I, but Brad Dubose preaches the word. Garamo, brother, all you other preachers in here, always base your message on the word of God. Now, if I can't handle that, that's not their fault. That's my fault. That's my fault. Amen. And I have to receive it as the truth of God if freedom is going to be sounding in my heart because that truth still makes free. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. You know, them boys has got them things, Matt, all of them, and they just punch that button. But I, I barely use my flip phone, so I'm going to stay with this book. Let's look at verse 37. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37. Jesus is speaking. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I want to read one verse out of chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. That's how we're going to do this. That's how we're going to win that world out there through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, church. Making Christ real and alive and powerful in our hearts and lives. Amen. Amen. And gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of disease. Hallelujah. I asked uh, uh, Brother Guillermo to pray for me too this morning. My old back's just been hurting. Both sides of it hurt. Uh, you can blame that to old age if you want or <laughs> just mean this working out of me. But I feel better tonight Hallelujah. because somebody prayed for me. You ought to pray one for another. I said, there's healing in that church when we pray one for another. 
I mean, you hadn't got to get, get on the stilts of phraseology. Just pray a simple childlike uh, prayer, and God will do the rest. Somebody amen. And I'm going to deal with a little bit of that later. Amen. Okay. And what, I think it was in Revelations. Yep. Got it marked. I think it's just one or two verses. Verse 12 of, of uh, Revelations 14. Here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are they dead, are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, they that may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon that cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying in a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Could you lift your hands up again tonight and just pray and love him tonight? Ask him to touch me. Anoint me and give me liberty to preach tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that your word might go forth in truth and verity tonight, Father. We thank you that we worshiped and praised you. In the spirit of truth, amen, we've magnified your name. And once again, you've encapsulated and came into this service tonight, touching, moving, and ministering as only you can tonight, Lord. And I pray that you would be standing in this altar with those arms open wide tonight, amen, to, 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 to bring us back to that place that you might use us to a greater degree and that we might love you to a degree that it's no more our life that we want to live, but your life wants to be lived through us. And we love you tonight, and Father, we love each other. I hold no enmity, no ill will against nobody tonight, Lord. Look in deep into my heart, God. If, I, if I've got something in me that's wrong tonight, help me to for, be forgiven, God, that I can preach the unsearchable riches of this great God and this great Savior. And we ask it tonight in a name that's above every name, this name of Jesus. And all the children of God said amen. You know, my grandpa worked in hay fields. I worked with him. We'd bale hay, and sometimes he'd grow watermelons, and sometimes he'd grow corn. And when it became fruitful and ripe, we had to gather that, that, that crop. We had to either make hay, hay bales, or we had to go get the watermelons, or we had to get that corn and shuck, pick, it, pick it and shuck, pull it and shuck, shuck it. And that's a lot of work. It's a hard work. But if we don't do that, that crop's going to fail. There's people outside in your life and in your family that might be like those crops if we're not going to go out and harvest them. Somebody's got to show them the way to Zion. Hello? Somebody's once again must tell them that there's a God that died on an old cruel cross and allowed men to do to him that wasn't powerful for men to do, died and was raised again to justify that redemption that that man of God talked about. I'm glad I'm redeemed tonight. I'm glad I'm redeemed, and I know that Redeemer that plucked me out of the portals of hell and set me on a solid rock. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's hard work, sacrificial work. It's a work that has to be done if that, that fruit is going to be com coming into the garner. Amen. All of the work is suspended to bring that crop in. And I don't know if we're not winning souls anymore, Jerry. I think we've lost Pentecost. I, I believe Jerry will testify. Y'all, that's why Pentecost was given, that we might win the law. Pentecost means harvest. And I believe we ought to. There's a, there was a lot of people here this morning and here tonight. I'm getting ahead of my message, so I won't say nothing else. But I'm here tonight whether I preach or not. Now, sometimes I miss. I'm just as guilty as the rest of us. But I'm going to tell you one thing. We ought to be here in this church when it's open because there's a trumpet going to sound. All of them people that's in Christ in that graveyard's going up first. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to start jumping. Can you say amen? I don't want to be too far behind them. Somebody shout. And I'm telling you, that trumpet's very near to that, that angel's mouth. When he blows that trumpet, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And if we stay alive and remain alive, we're going to be caught up together with them. You know, forever's a long time, Brother Guillermo. I, 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 I guess in my finiteness, I can't understand forever. But this is an eternal thing. It's an eternal kingdom because our God's eternal. Thank you, Amy. God bless you. She, she's a great helper to old people. Amen. The Word of God always tells us of a spiritual harvest. 
I made mention that some of y'all may have let the devil steal some things from you. We'll deal with that tonight too because he's a thief. But don't give him nothing. There's a young lady after Pastor Manuel preached tonight, come up here, and she said she was, she was fearful. I said, well, darling, I made mention of it, Amy, when y'all were singing. I said, the first two things of the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. I said, that's in you because that's the Spirit of Christ in us, the hope, hope of Christ and his glory. And I just, I just told her, I said, Lord, help her not be fearful in God. He, he, he hit me too. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad it's a two-way street? Come on, shout amen. I don't care who's ministering. That, that great God will touch both of us if we'll believe for him too. I ain't even got off the first page. I hope Linda won't get mad at me because she's, she wants to go to Waterburger early, you know. She loves me, but I'm in trouble now. You know, we plowed. We planted, and you've watered. But I got good news tonight. God said, I'll give you an increase. Amen. Don't quit, church. Oh, how close this is to being fulfilled, amen, as I read out of Revelation. That, that great God of heaven is still seated in the throne of God, and he's putting a, sing, a sickle in tonight. Can you say amen? Into our hearts, into hearts that we've been praying for. And I believe that hand will reach them and bring them in, amen, if we'll still believe and not faint. Amen. Be glad you children of Zion. I always tell you this. Some people in the church have been baptized in pickle juice. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't get a smile on their face. I preached in churches and revival was like that. And I'm, I'm pretty comical and nice fella, but, you know, dear God, I, I ought to be glad of my salvation. And I ought to be glad that you're my brothers and sisters. Hello, that we're going to a great place one day and that we're in this together. Amen. He's not excluded anybody. Can you say amen? amen? Be glad, you children of Zion. He has given us the former rain and the latter rain. Can you shout amen? amen. I thought about it this way, Brother Guillermo. I believe the cross was that former rain, but that latter rain was that Pentecostal church. Can you say amen? I believe that, Amy. Hallelujah. For without the cross, we can't have the upper room. But I'm glad for the cross tonight. Come on. He purchased us, and then he gave us an upper room experience and filled us with the power upon high that God the Father said, I'll give you, hallelujah, after that Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the fields are white, our fields are white tonight. But somebody's got to go and reap. I didn't get to go to that tent meeting. I started in a tent, amen, and I always thought God had finished in one because he started in a tent, but I saw some great moves of, of God in those old tents. One, one night in Kansas, I, I, I went, I had to go through Friday. I thought, uh, Brother Sorg, if you remember him, Brother Flowers, he was in Portland, Texas, great man of God. I preached several meetings for him down there, and we took the tent to Kansas in those uh, dunkers, they called them. But they were Amish people, and they would fill two, three rows in that, that old. I only had 200 chairs, but they were bringing out chairs. And Brother Robert Doom and uh, Porter wanted me to come and start Sunday. And I was having trouble with that old truck. Can you see? I ain't no good mechanic that I hauled all my tent and stuff with me. Murdy wasn't with me, so you know I'm lost as a goose if Murdy wasn't with me. So we, we, he said, can we go through Sunday? And I said, well, I said, let me call Brother Durham, because that's how I always did it. You know, if we had a, if the preacher wanted to go on a little bit more, I'd call that other preacher. I thought that was the way to do it, Brother Mills. If he, if he let me go, then I felt it was God. But Brother Durham said, well, we've had it, you know, advertised, and then da, da, da. Yeah, I said, well, I, I, I shut down Friday night, and, and people in the church are so wonderful. That old tent was, was tough to put up and to take down. And, and I, I just appreciate people, Amy. They, they just took it down, rolled it back up, set, put it in my truck, and I left out. And I don't know how far I went, but I shut down, and I could sleep on that. I had them rolled up in the middle of that truck, and I could sleep there. But I got to, I got to the porter it was Sunday morning. <laughs> Aren't you thinking God's good for you? I'm telling you, he ain't never let me down. Come on, church. <laughs> He's always made a way for me, but he loves you just as much as he loves me, and he'll make a way for you every time. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God's name. He's a way maker. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
what has been prophesied concerning your individual harvest and what you've been waiting for and watching for is about to come. Are you listening to me? I'm not talk talking in the great by and by. I'm talking to now. God has prepared a spiritual harvest for every one of you, sons and daughters, the whole bunch in one rudiment, amen, he's going to touch. My kids are gonna, not going to go to hell. Come on. He's going to save them with an everlasting salvation. If all I, can, all I have to do is pray and believe. That's all you have to do. Whatever he's got, pray and believe in or bring it to pass. But I got to get on his watch, his timetable. That's my sister back there, ain't it, darling? Bless your heart. Amen. Glory to God. We have lots of brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm sorry some of them I don't know their name, but he does. He's given his grace, his goodness, his power to fulfill everything, amen, he's told us to do. He's not going to tell you anything that he doesn't give you the power to accomplish. But we can't be fearful. We can't be doubtful. Come on. We can't stammer around with it. You got to do it. Amen. I told somebody the other day, I put that tent up for the first time over there on a place that they mowed between uh, uh by, by, the, by, by 288, the old business 288, and that other road over there that run by a place, and we put that tent up. And that night, I was preaching, and uh, there was a little lady came in, had a white stick and glasses, them dark glasses, and she sat down over there, and the Lord spoke to me. You know what he told me? He said, you go over to that water hydrant, and you make some mud over there, and you come put it on her eyes, and she'll leave here seeing do you think old Goofy Pat did that? Nope. Nope. That young man was over in that service station. God told me in the tow and their witness to him. He got killed the next day. I gave him a chick track. Are y'all listening to me tonight? We're still under orders, church. And I have to obey the voice of the Lord. Come on. You, you sheep know the voice. Somebody, well, I don't know if that's Lord. Yes, you do. It ain't the devil telling you to do good. Come on. It's got to be Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. He tells you to do something. Go do it. Come on, there's a great victory and a miracle there if we'll obey God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Talking about a harvest time, an end time uh, fulfillment of the things you've been praying for. Praise God. Now, Joel said that in the body of Jesus called the church, will he place deliverance? Do you believe that? Amen, I do. This place is a sharp threshing instrument, thank God. If I'd had false teeth, I'd like to spit them out on that threshing instrument. <laughs> Who's it in the hand? Who, 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 who are we in the hands of? Jesus. And don't discount Jerry because he's there too. All of us are there too. Oh, don't look down your little spiritual nose at me. I know y'all. You got your favorite preachers. You got your favorite people in the church. Those clicks stink to high heaven, honey. We're all one in Christ, this Bible says. And if we're not, we're hindering the move of God in this place. I'm telling you, if we're not right, our minds are not the same. God can't move like he needs to move here. My God, am I preaching good. Amen. Hallelujah. Joel saw this day, our day of his presence being fulfilled in us and through us, for us in his hand for such a time as this. I'm telling you, I don't know how many more days we got, Brother Flowers. Brother Mills, I don't know how much longer it's going to last. It can't last too much longer. I'm telling you, he's the only, he's the fix-it man. He's still that carpenter that's going to fix this thing, and he's got to come and do it pretty quick. But we still need to be busy about the Father's business. The revival that will touch everything is here. And now a time of plenty, a time of restoration, a true deliverance, if you will, and a time of all that, my Lord, it's our time to receive that and to operate in it. Amen. Amen. Now the prophet described the wonders of that time in these words, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. We need to start seeing that. Now he done prophesied to Jerry about raising the dead. That's part of the gospel, honey. I believe we ought to be raising the dead spiritually and physically. Amen. Love the way you're shouting. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. A lot of people in that Pentecostal church are blind and they can't hear. My God, if they would, something better would happen in their lives. Amen. And in our lives too because we're one. 
Then the lame shall leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. Thank God there's hope for me. For in the wilderness shall water break out and streams in the desert. You might have come in here so dry. I mean, if they could, you could pop popcorn. But I'm telling you, there's a stream here in your desert, mister. Come on, ma'am. There's a stream that wants to flow in your desert, honey, and make you fruitful in everything tonight. I'm glad I know him, and I'm glad he knows me. Amen. I, I wasn't looking for Jesus, but I'm glad he look, was looking for me. Come on, somebody. Thank God he found my hiding place. Come on and spoke that word into me. Come out of that darkness into the marvelous light in the face of my son, Jesus. They saw a time when the fearful would, would find a place of safety and peace. Amen. And described it, strengthen you the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are fearful, be strong. Fear not, behold, your God will come with salvation in his wings. I'm glad he's still got those wings tonight, amen. You know, there's feathers under those wings. Can you explain that to me, Brother Mills? My God has feathers under his wings, but thank God is that little chick, uh, Jerry, we can run under that he'll protect us from everything, amen, that might try to offend or attack. Amen. He said he would come with vengeance, even our God. See, I hadn't got to shoot nobody or beat nobody up. I probably can't do it no more anyway, but he can. I said, he can. You know, he said, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. There's some things in that Bible I might have a problem with. I don't want to feed my enemy. I don't want to do good to them that despitefully use me <laughs> and cuss me. Come on. Jesus said to pray for those and do good to them. For such is the kingdom of heaven. I got a long way to go tonight, but I'm still running a race with this wonderful carpenter. Come on, church. They worried about Sister Liz. I told uh, Sister uh, uh, Pam last night, I said, if God sends her over there, he'll bring her back. Come on. He's in her hand, church. Amen. Come on, somebody. He never sent nobody to just die without amen any ex explanation. But I believe she's going over there for the work of God into Ethiopia. Thank God somebody loves Ethiopia enough to send somebody over there and tell them there's a way out of that mess. Amen. Hallelujah to God. A missions-minded church. I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, Brother Manuel, it says he is still able to keep what I've committed unto him against that day. See, there's a day of judgment coming. That's what he's talking about. A lot of, a lot of people in the church don't think we're going to be judged. Yes, you will. There's two judgments. The judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne. Now, you don't want to do nothing with that great white throne. You'll have your day in court, but there's no lawyer there anymore. There's just the judge Jesus. But at that, at that judgment seat of Christ, if I've got anything that'll go through that fire... Anthony, I'm going to get to throw it at his feet. Come on, church, and hear one thing that, that this world may never hear, but I want to hear, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant, enter into the joy. Come on, somebody shout with me tonight. There's a joy in here in this place because one day we'll hear the welcome plaudit from our Savior. Amen? Job was the type of the church. I, I believe this. Amen. He, he started out blessed. Amen, victorious, then went through a time of poverty and persecution. You know, uh, we'll th we'll, if something happens to us bad, we'll think there's unconfessed sin in our life. That don't mean that you've got unconfessed, unconfessed sin in your life. The devil hates you. I said he will attack you, <laughs> and he's good at doing it. He's had thousands of millions of years to practice doing it. But always remember, as I said at the onset, the greater one lives in you. He's got no authority over you except what you give him. Come on. Now, if I've given all authority to Jesus, he's under my feet right now. Somebody say amen. 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 In trial, Job's faith held true. You know, his wife's telling him curse God and die. That's why I love Murdy. She never told me that. Because Murdy loves me and I love Murdy 54 years. Woo. Me and little Merlin have been married. She, she walked in that... In that, sun, uh, in that Sunday school, <laughs> I wished I'd have been in Sunday school with him. But she walked into that math class, and I said, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever saw in my life. But she didn't like me. 
So I really worked hard to make her like me. Can you say amen? If you want something, you'll do that. I'm preaching way better than you're shouting. I'm like pastor tonight. If you want something, whatever it takes to accomplish that want, you're going to do. Amen. Thank you, Brandon, Amen. or whoever that was. God bless you. You know, sometimes Brother Brad will jump on all of us, Anthony, because <laughs> we sit under his ministry so much. In trial, Job's faith held true, and God turned his captivity and gave him a double portion. You know, I used to have double portion services. Oh, yeah. I had a little bowl with oil in it, and I'd put my hands in it and give them the double portion. One day in that prayer closet, God said, what in the world is wrong with you? I don't know if he talks to you, but he talks to me. Because I shut up sometime after I pray. <laughs> Y'all better listen to me. You keep that mouth open, it's hard for him to get in. But after you ask God something or you're praying in there, he will talk to you and he'll speak to you many times in the Bible or an audible voice. And he said, what do you mean by a double portion? I said, well, I saw that man in New Orleans do that. He said, well, you ain't that man and you ain't in New Orleans. You get the fullness of the Spirit, Pat. You get to measure that Spirit without measure, my God. The same thing that Christ had, you have today, church. Come on. He's not minimized anything. What Christ has, what Christ was, we are and we're becoming. Come on, somebody say amen. Not a double portion, not a triple portion. The fullness of the measure of that Pentecostal river flows into us and flows out of us for the glory of God and our good. Amen. 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 In distress and suffering, that prodigal son. Oh, did I get ahead of myself? Sometimes, you know, I write, don't, I don't write real good. Yeah. Like Job, the church in these last days will come into maturity. Now, I, like I told you, I've been saved 34 years, so he's going to require a little bit of me. Now, those babes in Christ, oh, my God, when I first got saved, he changed them poopy diapers every day, re put me another pacifier in. Are you listening to me? He took care of me, buddy. But I have to grow in grace and the knowledge of God. You know, some of us will come to church once a week or maybe twice a week and never have any more activity with the Lord. Well, we're in trouble because you have to spend time with him. It is an individual person. Amen. Jesus said through the prophet Haggai, I will shake nations and desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory. Now, if we're looking at the temple of Solomon, that's, he, he filled it with glory. But he's looking at an earthly temple now, that the excellence of that glory might be us and not just that temple that Solomon built. Amen. The silver's mine, the gold's mine, and the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. We're that house tonight. Before Satan came on the scene, the Garden of Eden was, was great. With no sin, no poverty, no sickness, nothing there till Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit. One tree in there they shouldn't eat of. Next, chap, next verse, they're there. <laughs> That devil, amen, is lying to them. Somebody shout. And they believed it. Ate that fruit. Sin rose, came upon the whole race, amen. But did you think he just beat them to death, then stomped them in the ground? Oh, no. See, them fig leaves ain't what we need. He slaughtered some animals and shed some blood. It's always been a blood gospel. And he covered them again. Somebody say amen. Now, they lost all the provisions that God had promised them, but we're regaining them. We're regaining, we are regaining them through the gospel. Amen? Amen? Right here and now. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Satan is bound in the golden age, these things will be absent, but we have to face them today. At Calvary, God made provision whereby faith men could rise up, cast off the works of darkness, and overthrow the enemy. Now, we can die of sickness if you want to, but God also has made provision for that, church. Are you hearing me? He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our people placed upon him, and by those stripes we're healed tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, I might leave here tonight or fall down this off there and kill myself, but to be out of the body still in the presence, so I won't lose a penny. <laughs> Amen. I hope I live longer. Amen. To see my grandkids grown and married. Amen. And, and let me brag on myself one more time. I hadn't married but four people, but they still married. I tied that knot pretty tight. <laughs> Amen. Because you, you know why I said that? Because there's no commitment in marriage, but there's no commitment in the church. I'm just telling you, I, I just know. I know that's to be a truth. 
Praise God. Jesus, with his teachings, his sufferings, his death was an expression of the Father crying out against all death, all defeat, all sin, all disease in this world. The church is a prophet of Christ and a product of Christ. Amen. Death and resurrection proved that he was still alive and still doing what he was, was, was purposed for. It is not that the world, amen, to bolster a creed, we're not here, or to maintain a debating society. We're, we're here to let Christ live through us. That's as simple as I can say it. That's Bible. Amen. As, as we cooperate with God, amen, and in, in that cooperation, mankind is restored back to their lost paradise. I, I'm happy tonight. I, you know, I, I don't make a lot of money on Social Security, but I'm glad I got it. Glad I can buy some things to eat. You know, hallelujah. I talked about that night being plenty, amen, plenty full, <laughs> because God's a good God. But, you know, if we're looking to the government or any place other than the throne room of Christ, you're fearful. I, I watch some of that mess on that television. I get so mad I could, if I had a gun, I'd have shot my television. They have committees, Jerry, that... If they nominated me and you for some 10,000 jobs up there in government, we have to go to this committee. These senators have got to talk to us. And you talk about the wisdom of the world being manifested. You never heard of such idiotic mess in your whole life that people believe. Can you give me the definition of a woman? Well, uh, Congressman, well, Senator, uh, you know, the, 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 the Supreme Court, da, 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 he said, that's what I'm asking you. Can you give me the definition of a woman? They couldn't do it. What about a man? I'm talking about biology now. I'm not talking about gender or a race creed or some mess like that. I'm talking about biology. God forbid that I take my clothes off because it'd be bad. But you'd know for a moment that I was a man. Come on. Hallelujah. Now they're saying that, they're, that God made them that way. That's, that's hogwash. He didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve in that garden. He made female and male. My God, what's wrong with this world? Trans, the trans. I've got transphobia. Come on. That's another one of their little stinking words. Transphobia, Guillermo. I'm not scared of them, but they're going to bust hell wide open. Amen. Somebody just needs to tell me he didn't make no transgender in that garden. He made two people, and they were male and female. Now, I don't care where you're coming from, but it ain't right. I don't know why I said that. We was having a pretty good time. That came out. Huh? Occupation, occupation. Jesus said for us to occupy until he comes. You know what that means? To practice your trade 24-7. I'm just as guilty as y'all are. I'll sit in that stinking recliner, murder cooking that lunch or that supper, and I'm just happy as a pig in the poke. Why don't you get off your duff and do something, Pat Garrett? You might feel better. Huh? People just don't want to do nothing, and I'm just as guilty. And especially we ought to do something for Jesus. I'm not working for his works. Or to be a big eye in his kingdom. Somebody shout. I just need to be obedient when he tells me to do something. Hallelujah to God. Come on, somebody. He's called every one of us. He's reached down his hand and plucked you out of that place. Put a mark on you that you might represent him as he represents you. Hallelujah. Harvest. A harvest. That old prodigal. Bless his heart. You know. Brother Manuel, we put a lot of band-aids on the cross today in this so-called generation. We put crutches on Jesus, even though he was nailed to that cross for our sin, not his sin. That is the gospel. And you know what proved and justified that? God didn't leave him dead. Three days later, my God came out of that tomb. Somebody shout, I don't care how many Roman centurions they put at that rock. He rolled that rock away and life walked out of there. Our Savior came out of that tomb tonight, God, and he's alive tonight. How do you know that? Because he's living in me. Hallelujah to God. Woo! Glory be to God forever. You know, if we'll come out of that world, that world will come back to this church, and it'll be changed and sanctified flesh. Amen? Because flesh and blood can't go to where we're going. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hell, I'm on page four. I think I got ten pages. I hate long-witted preachers. I don't want to be one tonight. Y'all ought to said amen. Shout it a little bit. I'll give you a good opportunity then. Thank you, Jesus. In Luke 14, Jesus talked about the coming of the kingdom of God. And he likened it to a certain man who made a great supper and bade many to come. You know, this is Christ talking. But they made excuses. They're similar to God all through this Bible. They made excuses. We got something better to do than this. Then he found where we were hiding. Founded that drunk and that sinner and, and reached down that great hand of mercy and plucked them out and said, now you go to the hills and the highways and the byways and you compel them to come in. I'm glad somebody, somebody found my hiding place. I'm glad for a woman that I love with all my heart, kept on praying that I didn't even like a beer anymore in the, in the honky tonk. Somebody shout amen. He's working on you tonight. And those loved ones, you keep praying. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus said, none of these shall taste my supper. That's scary. Because I'm, I'm going to go to that supper. I want to go. If it's alphabetical, me and Myrtle ought to be together. My sons, if they make it, they got a choice to make. Amen. I'm praying for them, believing God to save them. But if it's alphabetical, you talk about a banqueting table. And you know the supreme guest is the Lord himself. I, I don't know how many angels or seraphim or theraphim are in that place, but in a minute we're seated. And those golden plates and goblets are before us. And then the, 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 the great guest of honor is going to approach that, that great podium. And there's going to be nail prints in his hands, nail prints in his feet in a place where that sword punctured that riven side. And then we're going we're gonna to go with the fourth thing that he said, now we're going to drink that cup of redemption. Come on. Yeah, he, that was that cup, uh, Beth, that he had in his hand when he said, I'm not going to eat, drink this cup till I drink it with you in the kingdom. But we're going to drink that. For, my God, if I could, I'd run right now. We're going to drink that cup, honey. The consummation of your salvation will be done when we drink that cup with the Lord Jesus Christ at that great banqueting table in heaven. Come on, somebody. Keep praying that there's all of us and all our people there. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. What a picture of those who make up the church from every walk of life. Spiritual desires are must because without Amen. We then become totally void of conviction. You, you know, I, I just appreciate the Holy Ghost uh, and, and the way he deals with me. You know, if I think bad about, about Amy, he deals with me about that. I never think bad about Jerry or Manuel, especially Salome, but I think bad about people. He, he nails me right then because he don't want me doing that. Man, y'all don't get quiet on me. He'd do the same thing for you if you're doing that. Get out of that. <laughs> if you're going to pray for, for, for Anthony and all these people, get in that altar and lay them on that altar and pray before God and let Jesus have them. That's the key to it. Amen. Amen. I'm not making any, any, any presumptuous judgments then. I'm going to let the Lord do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're not doing God any favors just by showing up on Sunday morning and can't get to the prayer meeting on Monday night. I wrote that down. Y'all still mad at me? Huh? You know, we don't have but about 20 or 30, and I guess this church runs to, runs 200 people. And I know there's, there's situations where you can't come. Don't get me wrong. But if there's not a situation, you ought to come to that prayer meeting. We, we just pray. That's all we do. We pray. We make a circle. Amen. The pastor usually is me sit down, and we pray. We take all our prayer requests, spoken, unspoken, whatever. He knows everything anyway, and then we go pray. And I appreciate pastor. I told him, I said, sometimes we want to give a testimony. We want to say this. No, we come to a prayer meeting. Let's pray. Let's get that praying done, and then if you want to visit or tell about something. Now, I have let him when he is, how I'm in charge, and that's very, very, uh, not often. But anyway, I tell him, I said, well, while you were praying, did God speak to you about something that you could 
reveal to all of these that come. Maybe uh, he might answer a prayer that they were praying through an individual. He does that. Amen. The prophet's always subject to the prophet, the Bible says, so that can work. Amen. Now, the vast majority of this modern church refused the invitation, just as I read, to thrust in the sickle and reap this final harvest of the earth. So God has said to the faithful remnant, go into those highways, those hedges, and compel them to come in. What he's saying to us is to go to the millions that may have never heard his name. That's why missions are so important. Thank God that we're doing something in Ethiopia. Come on. You know, Philip went to that Ethiopian eunuch and came up to that chariot, and he said, do you know what you're reading? He said, how can I know if somebody doesn't explain that to me? And he preached to him, Jesus. You go to any of those scriptures that where Christ is, he says they preach Christ. God help ministers again to preach Jesus. Oh, my God, preach Jesus. Amen. He, he explained to him who it was, and there was water there. He said, well, can I be baptized? Come on. Is Darren here tonight? First, first, first uh, service he's missed. I believe there's something growing in that boy. Can you say amen? Thank God for old Bill Shells that told him to come to church and he received Christ as his Savior. Come on. God's opening doors for him, and he always will because he loves us. Hallelujah. To change us and not leave us the way we were. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus said they're going to come from the east, from the west, from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And, and let me tell you a real revelation that God always spoke to me. I said, well, you, don't, you said that kingdom doesn't come with observation. He said, that's right. You said that kingdom's within me, yes. And he said, but you're waiting for the king. <laughs> Can you say amen? And that king's coming, praise God. Amen. One day he's going to appear. When this happens, there will be some that will weep. Amen. When they see us set down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the rest of those prophets. And it's not just the Jews he's referring to. It's, it's the church. I believe time is fleeting, beloved. I believe that, that, that what we're doing now must be rewarded then, and we must do it. This future hope is, in, is wrapped up in our decisions we make today. Eternity is settled forever on our decisions that we make today. Today is all I have. Today is all I can manage. But thank God, today is all I need. Amen. His promise is not for yesterday or tomorrow. His promises are today, my God, that I might receive them. The Bible says today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of the harvest, amen, that, that we might bring in those souls that we won. He has commanded the church to thrust in that sickle and reap. This is God's priority to reap the harvest of the earth, and millions of them have not heard the good news. Thank God they were going to Africa. <clears throat> well, that's just Ethiopia. Hey, don't ever despise small beginnings, honey. He might jump all through Africa. Come on. They need Christ. Christ was manifested to save the world, that those were lost, and he's still seeking. Come on. Wherever, wherever uh, uh, Sister Leah's goes, there, there's an avenue that people might get right with God. And that's a, that's a great thing because the mystery is going to be manifested to those that know the mystery, and that's Christ. The light will shine out of their, their innermost beings, amen, and glorify. See, if he knocks, I believe he knocks on every door. He's knocking on people outside the church, knocking on people, knocking on the door of people outside the church. And I believe he's knocking on people inside the church also. Whether it's Anthony, Brother Manuel, pastor preaching, he's knocking on doors. And I've got to be, I've got to open my door. No way that God ever forces himself on nobody. He don't come up there and kick your door in, but if I'll open that door, he'll come up and sup with me. And me and him will have communion. Amen. Oh, communion's a wonderful thing. Jesus said to redeem the time. Why? Because the times are evil. They're getting worse and worse, but there's still light in the lighthouse. There's still the goodness of God being manifest through those that believe. Amen? Some say Esau lived for only today. This is not the whole story. He didn't use his today right. Come on. If he'd have used his today right, his, his tomorrow would have been, been, been secured. Today, if you will hear his voice, he said, don't harden your hearts like those did in the day of propagation. Propagation, that's right. Sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my little mind. He saw him was it, who was invisible. I try to do that all the time, to see him who's invisible. Not just in you guys, but in every area of nature, I try to see the Lord. He's the creator of everything. No, nobody throwed a, a little old rock in some mud pit and you jumped out of there. 
He made you. He, he created you because he's a creator. Today is all we need, but thank God today is all we, 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 we need heaven. Amen. Five things I want to leave you with. Begin each day with a look into God's word, not just to read it, but let it speak to you. And when I open that Bible in the morning, my prayer time, my, my devotion time, I ask God that I might retain what I'm reading. And that's not bad. Go over the plans of every day in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Through the day, bear in mind that he is with you and that we must be about the Father's business as he directs us. Speak to him and above all, let him speak to you and leave everything in the hands of God. It's hard for us Pentecostals to do that. It's just terrible for us to do to leave it in the hands of God. But I'm telling you, you're in the great hands of God that will never drop you. Never <laughs> Come on, somebody. You, you can trust those hands, amen, to keep you uh, all the days, amen, of this life. Now, the harvest is ripe, and if our spirits are open to receive, then we are the laborers in this great time of blessing. Patience, oh, God. Y'all ever pray for patience? Good brother Bill Shells brought that up at lunch and during some of my lunch, but I had it most eaten. Me and Brother Richard and Tao and our children were small then, me and Murdy. We went to Yellowstone National Park, and I prayed for patience. I like to backslid. I'm telling you that. See, there's got to be tribulation that works patience, and we had our share. Can you say amen? But through it all, we stayed in love with the, with the Richards, stayed in work with the Garretts, and we made it back, amen, Love and everything prevailing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we need patience. I've got three scriptures that if you want to write down, I'll be a blessing to you. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, Luke 21, 19, and Hebrews 6 and 12. Be obedient. You, you can't get back through sacrifice what you lose through obedience. It's just impossible. I, I don't care how you play it around. You, you, you can't regain that. And be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. You know, you know, I came tonight, I sat there, and my old back hurt a little bit, but I could feel and sense the Lord's presence as y'all were worshiping. Huh? Isn't that good? I said, that's good. But don't walk by what you feel. Feelings are the biggest liar that the devil will ever place on you. I, I, if you're walking by feelings, you're in trouble because feeling's not faith. I, I don't care what you feel if you read the Bible or what you feel in this service. You believe that Bible. You live that Bible. Whether you feel nothing ever again. Come on. Because it's not just what you feel. It's what you believe. Amen. You can feel him. Come on, somebody. You hang in there. He'll touch your hand. <laughs> He'll touch you. You can feel him. But I can't walk by feelings because, amen. Let me see where I was at. Jesus said the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray you, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send, amen, forth labors into the harvest. And, and let, let me close with that. Put Matthew chapter 9, verse uh, 37 up there. Uh, one of you fellers, or you ladies. 37 and 38 and verse 1 on chapter 10. Matthew, then saith he, who, who said? Who did he talk to? Disciples. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors of food. 38, verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Chapter 10, verse 1. This is the key to all of it. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now this was before the day of Pentecost. But they had Jesus with them. But we have him tonight in us. <laughs> And that same power that he's operating in that chapter 10, he's operating in us tonight. Glory to God. The apparatus, I say amen. Let's see what I went. All right. This is in Hosea 10 and 12. And I promise I'm like Brother Manuel. He didn't lie this morning. He said, I'm going to read two scriptures and I'm through. You did good, buddy. Y'all know that scripture very uh, 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 Hosea 10 and 12 says this. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Now, most of us say, Lord, would you break my fallow ground up? Uh-uh. You break up your fallow ground. 
What is fallow ground? I'll tell you what it is. It's ground that once was cultivated, once plowed every year, but now it's being laid out and it becomes crusty and hard and nothing can get into it. The hardness of that heart is a, is a detriment of all Israel. You read those Old Testament. They were hard-hearted people. But God's a good God. He'd send a judge or a prophet, amen, and get them back in the, in the, in the, in the, in the yoke, can you say amen? But then they'd harden their hearts again and go to other gods and other, other, other Baalites and all of this mess. Good God, stay with Jesus. Amen. Stay with Jesus. I know there's going to be bad times, but there's also good times. Amen? It's just life. It's just life. And we're hid in that life. Can you say amen? Praise God. If we sow bountifully, thank you for pronouncing that right, Lord. We will reap bountifully. Who, who's going to sow? We are going to sow bountifully. And he said we'll reap bountifully. Don't be weary and well done. It's time for the harvest, and if we reap and not faint, it's coming. I'm going to deal with a few things in the altar in, in a moment. Where until shall we liken the kingdom of God or what is it compared to? Jesus says like a green mustard seed. Less than all the seeds, yet when it is grown, amen, in the earth, it grows and becomes greater than all the other herbs. It produces great branches. So it is with the vine and the branches. We're, we're in the vine and we're the branches. Amen. And the kingdom producing the character of the king is growing daily in you and I. We need to lift up our eyes again and look for those wheels or those fields are white under harvest. Amen. And I'm going to ask Amy and him to come back tonight and we're going to open these altars in a moment. Why don't you stand with me? That gets you closer to God in immediate is when you stand up. Amen. Thank you. Aren't you glad that he showed up again, that, that great God of heaven? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. This is Proverbs 10 and 5. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. When the prophet Isaiah in that sixth chapter saw the Lord high and lifted up, those seraphims flying around that throne room immediately, he was convicted of sin. This is a prophet of God, but he was convicted of sin. And then God said, you know, I'm going to take these coals with this tongue and touch your lips and your iniquity and sin is going to be purged. And then he asked him a simple question, who will go for us? I believe he's asking Central tonight, who will go for him? Who will go for Jesus? I believe that same seraphim is going to be dispatched tonight, and that live cold is that Holy Ghost to make Christ real and above and in your life. Hallelujah to God. Lift your hands again one more time. Would you do that? And in this altar tonight, I want you to pray for your loved ones. So the devil's a liar. I'm going to pray with you tonight and believe God, amen, he's going to answer those prayers that hadn't been answered. Come on. Second, make, make sure we're right with God tonight. Make sure that we're right with him. If there's conviction here tonight and he's dealing with your heart, then you repent of that, that sin and confess it. And he'll come and he'll, he'll, he'll heal you in every area. Get back what you gave the devil or what that devil stole from you. Uh, he spoke to me that there was people here that gave stuff that they didn't have to give to that stinking devil. You gave it up. You don't let that devil have nothing else anymore because that greater one is in you tonight. Hallelujah to God. And you have authority over everything in heaven, on the earth, and even below the earth. There's a name given to you above every name that's named, and that's the name of Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. And lastly, what did I write here? Keep believing. Don't give up and believe that that answer that you prayed, I don't care how many times you prayed it, is still on the way. And I believe what he's saying to us tonight, as we do that, he's going to give you an answer one way or the other. Could you believe me with it? Amy, will you want to sing something? I'm, sure. I'm going to join you. Would you all come with me tonight in this altar? I've Just come on up here. How could I express? Come on, what's
as I preach tonight, you, that devil's been stealing or whatever's happened, or the prayers, amen, that hadn't been answered, I want you to come up here. We're going to make a prayer of agreement. And we agree as touching anything on this earth, it'll be done of our Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Come on up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing. Just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. So come on my soul, 
Don't you get shout me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those bones. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shout me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside. Except for a heart singing, hallelujah. 